What's up guys, today I'm gonna be showing you a general rule of thumb for shooting film without a light meter and getting the correct exposure. And that method, as some of you guys will know, it's called the Sunny 16 method. Now, the reason why I say that this is a very general rule is because obviously the best method is still going to be a light meter. And obviously light meters can get very expensive. So this is just the one method to kind of have in your head at all times for a general rule when it comes to dealing with light. And also this typically just refers, and also this typically just refers to outdoor photography where there is natural lighting and it is generally between an aperture of f16 hence the name sunny 16 and then down to about we can go down to about an f4 or f2.8 um, depending on the situation so before we take a look at the actual chart of the sunny 16 rule the general rule of thumb is whatever iso film you're shooting at or speed film you're shooting at for example you're shooting at portra 400 you want to set your shutter speed to one over the closest um, to your iso level so for portra 400 generally the typical speed that is the closest to that would be 1 over 500 unless you have a camera that shoots 1 over 400 that would be the precise method if we keep going for example if you have a film that is 50 speed you want to probably shoot at 1 over 60th that is probably the closest in a typical film camera so again we'll go over that one more time the shutter speed you set to one over the closest to the iso that you're shooting now once you set the shutter speed you want to take a look at the natural lighting around you so let's take a look at the chart if it's very sunny out not a single cloud in the sky you're going to set your aperture to f16 now moving on you want to go down to an aperture of 11 if it's a little bit cloudy you know a few here and there but not a full sun out you want to go down to an f11 and then when it's partly cloudy you want to go down to f8 and then at an overcast you want to go down to a 5.6 and then let's say that you want to shoot at a sunset time or there's a lot a lot of shade you want to go down to an f4 and normally that's where the general rule kind of stops but if you want to go down to an f 2.8 that's usually good for a time around dusk where there's like little still light but not that much now i find that whenever you want to use this general rule that the best time is the obvious one when you don't have a light meter this general rule comes in handy and probably the most important time that this sunny 16 rule comes into handy is in my opinion it is like street photography or what you want to label as street photography meaning like just anything fast paced you don't have time to sit there take a light reading you kind of want to have a general rule in your head i think that is probably the best time to have this rule in your head so that you don't have to like set your light meter and all that you just kind of know and you just go from there so again, you do want to try to memorize these numbers as best as you can. If not, definitely screenshot it or like put it in your notes on your phone. And obviously that also helps too. And when you're using this rule and you kind of doubting yourself, it is always best to overexpose. When in doubt, always overexpose because film is very forgiving. If you underexpose, even in post, it's very hard to bring up the shadows it gets very grainy it's it's kind of like the opposite of digital basically for those of you who have shot digital i would say the general rule is even if you have a underexposed photo you can still bring back the details by bringing up shadows and all that stuff but if in a digital photo if it's overexposed and the highlights are blown out that's kind of it's basically impossible to bring out the details at that point so film and digital is opposite uh, generally speaking of course so 
in film you want to overexpose and in digital you want to underexpose or you don't want to but in the extremes basically are the opposite so you might be asking yourself uh besides like the obvious bright bright sun and not a single cloud how do you kind of gauge the the light coming in you know or obviously again starting with f16 when it's really sunny you'll have these sharp sharp shadows so you kind of want to gauge it off shadows and not just like oh hey there's two clouds in the sky like let me just shoot at f11 you know like f11 is like you still have shadows but they're not as like crisp and sharp is they're kind of diluted shadows a little bit then you want to probably shoot at an f11 so you want to go down from there like at f8 is a you still got shadows but obviously way less outline very sharp outlines are not as detailed you want to go down to an f8 and again i keep emphasizing that this is a general rule because obviously the best way to learn these stuff and by the way i'm still learning i take notes i you can take a picture of the same subject and shoot it at uh f16 f11 f8 and then mark it down to what you shot them at and take a picture or take a look at them after you develop them and see how each frame turned out oh um it's overexposed at uh, this aperture and so on and obviously the best way is to just um, experience film mess around with it and i know this hobby is kind of expensive especially now with prices going up so i'm not saying experiment lightly obviously you still want to be smart with it but i think the best way in anything you're pursuing is just experience go out there and trial and error so what happens when you want to shoot at a f 5.6 you want to get that more shallow cello you want to get a more shallow depth of field even on a bright day what do you do then because you don't want to be shooting at an f16 all the time on a sunny day well it gets a little bit more complicated but i say the general rule in that sense is once you memorize the standard um, f stops not the in-betweens but the standard ones like 16 11 8 5.6 and so on and then once you memorize the standard settings in a for shutter speed then it'll be a little bit easier so let me show you this chart for an example of a iso film at 100 so we go back to the general rule which is for an iso speed of 100 film you want to go 1 over 1 25th again the closest shutter speed to the speed of the film and that's at f16 so once you want to go down each aperture you do want to go basically get faster and faster by each stop on your shutter speed so at f16 it's 1 1 25th of a second right then you go down more what is the next shutter speed it is 250th so that'll be at f11 then at 8 it'll be 1 over 500 and so on so in this case i want to shoot at f 5.6 on a bright sunny day i have to use 1 over 1000 again a general standard so you can kind of apply this method to any of the speed films and that's how you shoot different apertures if you don't want to sh set your shutter speed all the time. I hope that helped you guys a little bit. I'm sorry if certain parts were a little bit um, not as clear, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have down in the comments. I read them all and I'm happy to respond to them. I wanted to do a different style and help with a tutorial for today so i hope you guys enjoyed that one and if you can please like the video it actually does help me a lot because it gets my videos out there and i would really appreciate that you guys been showing a lot of love recently so i really appreciate that and if you can also subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you know when my next videos are out and i'll see you guys in the next one peace Oh, 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 oh,